Hey, I'm Rolf from JustTheRoad.com and I'm going to show you how to play Marvel United. This is a cooperative game for two to four players with slightly different solo rules I'll cover at the end of this video. It plays in about 40 minutes, is designed by Andrea Chiavizio and Eric M. Lang and is published by Command. Players play as one of one of the many Marvel heroes, rescue civilians, defeat thugs and henchmen and perform heroic feats. Defeat the villain of the game to win. Setup starts by putting out the mission guide in the middle of the table with the three mission cards under it in any order. Choose any villain. Put the villain dashboard above the mission guide and add health tokens according to the chart on the dashboard. For example, in a three player game, Red Skull starts with eight health. If their dashboard has a track, put a cube on zero. Choose any six random location tiles, lay them out on the table so they form a circle around the mission guide. Add civilian and thug tokens to the shown spaces on each of those locations in the faded out boxes. For example, the shield headquarters gets one civilian and one thug. Now those faded out spaces are only used during setup. Either token type can be put in those spaces once the game is underway. Each of the villains comes with two decks of cards. Shuffle the villain's threat cards, place one face up on each location, covering the end of turn part on the bottom of that location. Add the purple threat tokens to the slot next to them and health tokens to henchmen if that threat has one. For example, Crossbones starts with 6 health. Shuffle the villain's master plan deck, place it face down next to a random location and put their mini on that location. Each player chooses a hero and places their mini on the location directly opposite the villain. They also take their deck of hero cards. If playing with a challenge, choose and resolve the challenge card now. Now these challenge cards remove the powerful and versatile wild action cards from the hero's deck, making that game just a little bit harder. Each player shuffles their hero deck and draws three cards. On to gameplay and the villain goes first. Place the top card of the master plan deck face up to create a row of cards called the storyline. The card is then activated from top to bottom. For the arrow, move the villain clockwise that many locations. Then resolve the threat card on that location if it contains this symbol with an arrow pointing at a target. For example, brainwashing will give a crisis token to heroes in this and adjacent locations. Crisis tokens have varying effects depending on the villain used. I'll show an example of how Red Skull uses them later. Remember to always activate this on the location the villain is on after moving. Even if the villain moves zero spaces, you activate the tile they stay on. For BAM, activate the villain's BAM ability shown on their dashboard and the BAM ability of any threat cards in play. For example, Red Skull will deal 1 damage to each hero at their location, and you increase the fear trap by 2. Whenever a hero takes damage, that player puts a card from their hand on the bottom of their deck. For an example of a BAM effect on a threat card, Madam Hydra deals 1 damage to each hero at their location, but any hero can gain a crisis token to prevent it. Now an important note for the language on the card, it does say here that any hero can gain a crisis token to prevent the damage, so it doesn't have to be the hero that's being attacked. Back to the villain card, and this section asks that you add thugs or civilians to the board on the villain's location and those adjacent. And you always add them in clockwise direction, thugs first, then civilians. If there are not enough slots, activate the villain's overflow ability on their dashboard. For example, Red Skull increases the fear trap by one for each civilian or thug that could be placed. Instead of adding civilians or thugs, the cards may have a special effect. Simply resolve this card. For example, Hydra Insurgency asks that you increase the fear trap by one for each crisis token the heroes have. And after you've resolved the villain's first card, the heroes get a turn. You choose by starting a start player, and you play in clockwise order from then on. Firstly, they draw a card from their deck. Now heroes could get knocked out, more on that later, but if they were knocked out on a previous turn, instead of drawing one card, they'll stand their hero mini back up, draw four cards, and continue taking their turn. If drawing one card or recovering from a knockout, the next thing you do is play a card to the end of the storyline next to the previously played card. Next is to resolve actions on the play card and the previous hero card in the storyline. For example, if Captain Marvel plays this attack card, they will be able to use Black Widow's move and attack actions from the previous card. Actions on the previous hero card are still taken even if a villain card splits them up in the storyline. Players can also gain action tokens throughout the game. These can be spent during the turn or saved for later. And the actions on either of the cards or with action tokens can be played in any order, including the special effect if the card has one. For example, Black Widow has the ability to look at the top card of the master plan deck and choose to place it on the bottom of the deck. Or not. Also, Hulk Smash deals 1 damage to everything in that location. Thugs, henchmen, villains, and yes, even other heroes. You also discard all civilians at that location. And again with the language, everything does indeed mean everything, including your fellow heroes. But remember, you don't need to use all the actions available to you on a turn, including a special action if you played one. There are only three types of actions, so let's look at them now. The green arrow is to move one location in any direction. 
The red fist is to attack, deal 1 damage to an enemy in that hero's location. Thugs are defeated with 1 damage, add it to the defeat thugs mission card. For henchmen, remove 1 health token for each damage dealt. If the last token is removed, remove the threat card and move the threat token to the clear threats mission card. If you're in the same location as the villain, an attack will remove 1 health from their dashboard. However, you can't attack the villain from turn 1, you need to complete some missions to be able to unlock that ability. More on that in a bit. Until then, the villain cannot take damage from anywhere, unless stated. Back to the actions and the start icon is the heroic action. Rescue a civilian at your location, add it to the rescue civilian mission card. Or you can place an heroic action token on a relevant threat card in the hero's location. If the last token is added, remove the threat card and move the threat token to the cleared threats mission card. This symbol is for a wild action and counts as any of these three actions, move, attack or heroic. Once a player has resolved their actions, they resolve their location's effect. Apply the end of turn effect on the location if the threat card was removed from that location, revealing the ability. For example, the New York Police Headquarters allows you to discard a thug from any location. And another language note, this is discard, not defeat, so it doesn't go on the defeat thug's mission card. After every three player turns, resolve a new master plan card and then play continues clockwise from the last active hero. When adding tokens to the missions, eventually one will fill up. That mission is now complete. When a mission is complete, remove the card and shuffle the remaining missions to the right. The effect above any empty slots is now active. After the first completed mission, the villain now activates after every two hero cards instead of three. After the second mission, the villain can now be attacked and take damage. The third mission is optional. If complete, every player draws a card. This can be important as players put cards on the bottom of their deck when they take damage. When the hand is empty, they get knocked out. If a hero discards their last card, they are KO'd, lay them down. And if a player plays the last card from their hand, they are KO'd at the end of that turn. KO'd characters are not all in-game effects, positive or negative. Each time a character is knocked out, resolve the villain's BAM effect, but not the BAM effect of henchmen. As mentioned earlier, at the start of a KO'd hero's turn, you stand up the hero mini and draw four cards from the deck. The three card starting hand, plus one extra, because it's now your turn. A couple of other rules, invulnerable tokens can be gained. The recipient will not take damage while they have it, discard it at the start of that hero's next turn. Also, if events resolve at the same time, the players choose the order they resolve. Now, play will continue until one of the end game conditions is met. The villain's condition is printed on their dashboard. In this example, Red Skull will win when their fear track gets to 20. The villain will also win if any one hero starts their turn and their hand and deck is empty. Heroes win if they defeat the villain by reducing their health to zero. Onto the solo rules, which are mildly different. Set up any changes in one way. Choose three hero decks, shuffle them all together, and draw five cards. As you're playing with three heroes, the villain's health is set to the three player amount shown on the villain dashboard. In gameplay, play any hero card from your hand, but the card played is considered the active hero. So from this hand, if I choose the Iron Man card, I will move and activate as Iron Man this turn. Now you are always the active player and anything that refers to other players always refers to you. And if a character's ability refers to their next turn, that next turn only occurs when you play one of their cards into the storyline. For example, Ant-Man has the card Shrink that prevents them from taking damage until their next turn. They will stay invulnerable until you play another one of their cards, no matter how many turns pass in between. When completing that third mission, as you have three characters, you draw three cards. You win the game in the same way, but as you only have one hand of cards, if that hand of cards runs out, you lose. That's Marvel United, a cooperative superhero game. Thanks for watching, remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a video goes live. You can follow me on Twitter, Insta, Twitch and YouTube at Jester the Rogue and finally the blog at JesterTheRogue.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and until next time, I'll be on your left.